When I was a little bitty boy, my grandmother gave me a cute little toy. A two silver bells on a string. She told me it was a my ding a ling. Oh, my ding a ling. My ding a ling. He told me it was oh, my ding a ling. Oh, my ding a ling. Oh, my ding a ling. She told me it was be my ding a ling. <laughs> Yo, 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 yo. Howdy, howdy, howdy. Had a couple ideas. I was listening to a program on CBC called Opstick. O'Reilly. Uh, Under the Influence or Age of Persuasion. I can't remember which one. Anyways, we're talking March 15th, so I was just listening to it. It's actually still on, but I shut it off because they were talking about blah, blah, blah. The first two pieces of... I like this guy. Oops, Terry O'Reilly. Uh... Chopping Heads to Mercy and Graham Crackers as a Cure to Spanking the Monkey. So the first one, going from Chopping Heads to Mercy. So something going from Chopping Heads to Mercy. Oh, blah, 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 blah. It was a beautiful kind of piece. Didn't know how to spell it, so I decided to do a video instead. So we're talking about a guy whose last name was Guillotine, who invented the guillotine. <laughs> This guy, apparently, he was against the death penalty, did not like it. So he was inventing a device that would make it more humane. Didn't want the death penalty, but he was inventing a device that would end up being used as one of the primary forms of executing people or one of the most known forms, one of the most, we'll talk about pop culture instead of actual historical frequence. But anyways, we know about the guillotine. This guy did not want to kill people. Then it starts getting used, and I guess he actually went to the government of France, the New Republic, I guess as it were, saying, please, can you take my name off this thing? Call it something else. Call it le, le putain de... You know, <laughs> le separateur. I don't know. They wanted, I don't know. Call it something else. They said, no, 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 et no. So they did not want to change the name. So instead, what he went up and did, he changed his name. The guy changed his last name to Mercier. <laughs> Holy smack, I love that one. So the guillotine, Monsieur Guillotine, became Monsieur Mercier. Mr. Guillotine became Mr. Mercy. Oh man, I love this guy. I don't know. I gotta look him up. Gotta look up Mr. Guillotine or Mr. Mercier or both. Fudge. Second idea that came up. Graham Crackers. Where did that guy come from? What do you mean that guy? The guy named Mr. Graham. Oh, that's what the crackers are named by. What's the story behind that? Mr. Graham was like, he was worried about, you know, sort of problems with Sexual urges, as it were. His sort of philosophy was sex only for reproduction. And how to minimize other urges, especially seeing, and his theory was that spanking the monkey, masturbating, as it were, would, would have serious psychological effects and physical effects. One of the physical effects being your eyes going, first of all, red, Rolling back in your eyes and you going blind. Quoting Terry O'Reilly, but I got to look this guy up too. So, solution, his solution was through diet. That by simplifying your diet, you would simplify your urges and therefore you could help minimize sexual urges. So it was a very simple diet based on very simple ingredients. Dry, bland as you can. Hence the graham cracker. One of the elements of the diet. Now we're talking about this much years later, as Terry pointed out, whereas we're making graham crackers with, you know, refined flour, you know, these kind of, it's not exactly natural, right? But it is known for being bland. And we put some, you know, you know, <laughs> some marshmallows and chocolate on it, as it were, and make it good. But the original idea behind the graham cracker was to help people reduce their urge to masturbate. 
I don't know what you guys do when you're all alone out camping. But sometimes when you have some s'mores, you have energy to do some more. Self-loving! Anyways, I'm going to turn back on the show see if he has anything else interesting to say. Oh, I love this. Yeah, stacky. We are under the age of influence. That is not at all right. We were under the influence or in the age of persuasion. I think the age of persuasion became, came before and then we were finished with the age of persuasion by the way of titles for Terry O'Reilly's show and became under the influence. So, talk to you later. Listen to you later, Terry.